So good morning, first. Um, so frog burger because I'm French and my last name is burger. So I guess the two things will be uh, going well together. Um, to quickly uh, describe a little more on my experience, so I was in a, in a network equipment provider called Nortel, helping developers. Actually, I have some pattern about exposing API on top of telecommunication equipment, which were filed in 98. Uh, then I moved to Microsoft because I decided to go to the other side at the pure application level. And then I moved to uh, Vodafone because I wanted to see the, the operator side. <coughs> and now I'm back to uh, a vendor but more uh, specialized on exposing API and uh, it's, it's a pretty exciting, uh, exciting story actually because this looks like uh, the the glue of uh, the next integration uh, mechanism. API monetization and disruption. So I've prepared this presentation for, for focusing on, on, on service provider because in a sense it's very key and important to understand the evolution and how uh, things will happen. So as everybody said in the previous presentation, everything is moving to apps. And it's interesting to see that over the top of over the top are emerging. So everybody will be an over the top of uh, somebody else at some point, uh, which means I think it will be uh, quite ridiculous to call over the top over the top because at some point everybody will be that. And uh, but the point is that the trend is really to move to to apps, and uh, apps is emerging as being the tip of another iceberg, which is basically all of the smart thing. Like uh, when you talk about smartphones or smart health or smart whatever, if you look at that, it's, it's always the same type of pattern. You have an app which run on a, a pretty sophisticated phone or device. Then you have an API and then you have a cloud service which basically are reachable through uh, some kind of network. And why then uh, it shows the importance of, of operators or network operators because in order to reach the device or to reach the cloud service, well, guess what, you need a network for that. And more and more, this will become uh, difficult because uh, when you start to develop touch-based smart type application, I guess what, uh, speed of light is not enough. So one millisecond is uh, a problem or above that, which means that if your cloud service you have to reach is on the other side of the planet, that will be at least 10 or 20 millisecond delay, and that will not uh, uh, fly very well. So the point is network has to evolve, but application or cloud solution or smart solution have also a need to evolve. Now when you look at the the the, the the cost or the pricing aspect. The interesting piece is a solution which go from connectivity device enablement and then you have a cloud service and then you have the app. From a, from a cost or a monetization perspective, you have a, a, a very cost driven point of view when you look from a, the network perspective. And you have a very value driven point of view where you look from uh, a solution or a top level perspective. And what, why it's, it's very important is because a value necessarily mean a, a bunch of money, it's uh, maybe a data which then can be used uh, to do something different or um, geared to people towards a specific item and so forth. And, and when you understand value base uh, a business, uh, you understand that a lot of the direct business model which generally hinder uh, operators to expose API uh, because it's very difficult to have a direct business model on API. Well, if you look at more value-driven type paradigm, uh, a lot of things start to be extremely valuable uh, and should be exposed except that you won't get direct revenue, you will get indirect revenue. So, looking at uh, 
not, at the beginning, you have to, not to start looking at API. You have to really look at your core assets. See, because in a sense, an API is a reflection of the assets you have behind the scene. And the assets is where the API is being implemented, and then you decide to expose whatever you want to expose. And what are the assets of an operator? See, because when, when you look at Google or Facebook, they're actually very clear of what are their assets. And then they're clear of what they need to expose, and then they're clear on the business model associated with them. And that's why I arrive with three, because generally it's a very small number. But three, which is a user, is an asset, you know, reflected through different, uh, two different aspects. Of course, the network is an asset. And sometimes the way it's reflected is not necessarily what we think it should be. And finally, the device is an asset. Because in a sense, we are dealing with a lot of connected devices as a network operator. And that, that's something which needs to be, to be explored or um, benefited from. The, the name around each of the asset is basically what you can do with it. Many discussion we had before like, was about identity, for example, and you're right, trusted identity is a key, a, a key API coming from the fact that we have the user assets. Why? Because it's very important for somebody who wants to use identity that these identities are validated. So why people don't want to use Facebook ID? Because 20% of the Facebook ID are fake. And what is the impact of fake identity to uh, uh, somebody like Dropbox or Evernote? Is a, a fake identity never become a premium user? That's the reason why the Box or Evernote are interested in trusted identities. They're not necessarily interested on, on all the work we do in order to make trusted identity, but they're interested because from a business model perspective, having fake identity which never become a premium user destroys the business model. So offering that will be a, a great thing. Uh, charging, billing, of course. A profile is another interesting one. Is A lot of time, uh, uh, OTT partners would like to, uh, to benefit on the fact that operators have a brick and mortar presence. When you go to a shop, why not having a Chinese menu of over-the-top people to, to pre-register in order to simplify the usage of this over-the-top service over the phone. So anyway, and we can look at the network. The network, and that's where, of course, the two first one or QS messaging and, and notification are, are the, the well-known one. It's like, a, yes, we should make money on that. But then uh, you start to look at more esoteric solutions like Edge Cloud. So going back to this uh, one millisecond problem, uh, a lot of over-the-top, let's call them over-the-top now, but a lot of digital service providers have a problem of latency on their solution. And the way to cope with latency is to migrate the cloud service from a, a very centralized data center to an edge. And proliferation of the box, which are being installed on premise in the enterprise or within even the operator network, are a way for this uh, uh, digital service provider to, to cope with some of the latency issue. So Edge Cloud is, is an interesting concept because it, it will allow operators to, to basically become IT providers and saying, look, I am an IT provider at the same level than the Amazon or, or the the Google of the world, and be, but have resources you cannot implement, and these IT resources are the resources which will be at the edge of the network. Then going down to the device, uh, uh, I like the, the Telecom Italia presentation where we were talking about a device uh, and M2M solution, but when you look at it, what is it? It's, it is really making the device become a service. And then a device as a service option arrive when you have abstraction, management, and connectivity basically hidden from the, 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 the application which we would like to use that device for what the device is good at, which is providing inputs and receiving comments. So which means that, and that if you make device as a service, you realize that people, some people may want to become device service provider. And saying, I manage device, and now what do you want to do with this? 
your problem, but at least you don't have to deal with connectivity management and the abstraction piece, which is uh, something which is fairly complex and extremely valuable. So if you look at the assets, you realize that for few assets, a lot of operation <coughs> on the assets, so how you, how you can do things. Uh, one is partnership. See, and that's the reason why we should not call OTT OTT. It's, it's a bunch of uh, service providers and we should all partner with each other in order to make a real cool solution. Look at the web. At the web, they, everybody partner with everybody else. Like Twitter use Amazon to store images. Uh, Amazon use another service provider to do search and, uh, and so forth. And everybody understand the value of not trying to overstep on the domain of other people, but try to use what this other service provider are providing. Because it's a more efficient way to, to focus on what you're good at and then delegate the rest to some people who are good on other things. So in a sense, the partnership aspect is a, a crucial piece uh, operators uh, should be able to understand. And, and based on, on the assets, which is the user assets, there is a great value of creating strong partnership. <coughs> The second one is, of course, innovation. And innovation is not necessarily like arriving with the most esoteric API ever that nobody will use, but it's mostly by, by trying to combine API. And uh, 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 Brian from, from Twilio was uh, expressing this. With, it's a very top-down view. It's understanding what the developer wants. It's not trying to say how cool I am, because people may know that, but, uh, but they may not care about it. It's more. How, wh what problem do you have and how do you need to solve that problem? And it, it's a very, m it's much more humble type approach uh, than uh, 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 the, the classic approach of an operator like come to me and things will be better. It's more, how can I help? And in a sense, taking a how can I help will derive to new combination of API and potentially uh, uh, raise re-raise value on some of the API with things that are being commoditized. So just one quick example, like M2M and SMS. It, SMS is a great, great tool to wake up a device with a very ubiquitous client, which is listening. To try to, to wake up a device with other things is becoming difficult. SMS could be a good solution for, for a lot of the M2M solution. But the problem is, it's not bundled, which means that we lose the opportunity and somebody does, does this for us or for the operator. The last one is be part of the a larger ecosystem. So it's not only creating a partner ecosystem, but it's also be part of partner ecosystem. Because in a sense, uh, uh, that's, that's all the, the kind of like the game theory associated with all the operators. Uh, operators tend to compete too much against each other forgetting that actually they should compete against somebody else, which means that being part of a larger ecosystem will make the industry stronger, otherwise fragmentation will give an opportunity for a lot of people to overcome uh, some of the things. So partnership, quickly. Uh, you can categorize three types of service, like as looking at over the top. The, the, the services that run on top, and generally you do a very small type of partnership, which is a marketing agreement, and, and that's about it. Not good good thing, but not much value from an operator. Then you have the service that run better on. And the service that run better on are based on kind of like, it's not a new trend, but you start to see this more and more, like a, when Vodafone partner with Spotify. And that to say, what's happening is uh, Spotify will, a, a Vodafone user, can have a Spotify account and the account will be free for two years. So that's a strategy work better on. So it's a win-win-win solution. Win solution for the user because he has a free Spotify account. Win for Spotify because every user is becoming a premium user. And win solution for Vodafone, why? Because it's a way to steer people to specific tariffs. And steering people to specific tariffs has two impact. One is you can discard obsolete tariff, which is a lot of saving at the billing system level. But also you can entice people to say, hey, you should use this new tariff because uh, it's about 4G or whatsoever. 
So you start to see like a, a, some of this relationship, and they are generally based on on three or four APIs like registration, identity, user verification, and billing. And once you've done that, guess what? You can create an ecosystem of partners that run better on. Of course, after that, you can enhance by adding QoS and things like this, but you actually need to start, and, and that's where it becomes interesting. interesting. The second interesting piece after that, it becomes the fact that once you create a partnership, you can decide who you're going to acquire. It's not like a blind decision. It is really a, a targeted decision of deciding, okay, this one seems to be critical. Maybe I should acquire because that will reinforce and going to the third level, which is service that are running by the operator. The problem is today we, we do, the oper a lot of operators have done the reverse. So the, they, they've moved too quickly over the, to compete against over the top, and that generally doesn't work very well. So that's kind of like the, the partnership aspect. The, the innovation aspect is, as, as I mentioned before, is combining like M2M or context-based communication management, which is an interesting one. Like everybody is about core control, but you know what? Core control is, a, is really a basic asset which, which is becoming, becoming commoditized. Uh, Twilio arrives with a very good API, like Skype has good API, which means that maybe it's not the right focus where context-driven or context-based communication management could become the new way to do uh, communication control. So what does it mean? It means that you create a context and then you set up what type of communication these two entities or more wants to have at that moment. Uh, I'll give you, uh, s uh, Facebook has the premise of that with a service called Messages, where basically they intermediate different type of clients I am, SMS, and email between two parties, and they literally use 60 parameters to define who will connect to what at what moment in order to decide on how things happen. Now, introduce voice on top of that, and you get RCS on steroid, and introduce everything else, and you get like a, this communi context based communication, which will have API and which will be then a <coughs> crucial asset for the person or the company which will be able to deliver it. Last and not least is this hybrid cloud. The so hybrid cloud is becoming a, a hot item where everybody is trying to figure how to become the broker of different cloud environment. Why not the operator? Hybrid cloud doesn't mean that you need IT resource. You just need to point where the IT resource are. And second, because with SDN and F uh, NFV, uh, there is a whole trend of virtualizing the network. Guess what? Each time you virtualize a network, you create IT resource. IT resource now can be then offered the same way Amazon offer IT resource of data center, but now you've provided IT resource. Great advantage, these IT resource are at the edge of the network or can be at the edge of the network, which then solve a lot of the latency issue or other issues associated with running very small <coughs> workload in back-end data center. These three things are kind of like the innovative domain where definitely we sh uh, operators should move on. And here's an example based on the asset description, which assets are needed and what then is becoming uh, the result of that. Then you need to be part of this federation or uh, you create a federation. And, and please don't do an aggregator again because aggregator need to exist, but they need to exist when they have a purpose. When you create an aggregator for the, just the sake of uh, uh, not of being lazy, because in a sense, uh, uh, generally that, that's what happened, uh, then it, it, it become a shame. Uh, WAC was basically an aggregator which was trying to cope with the fact that operators were lazy of agreeing on a specific standard of like specific API. Today, when you look at the new evolution of uh, WAC, which is more like a, a federated model based on a DNS type paradigm, which is much more an internet type domain, uh, uh, you, don't, you don't have an aggregator. What you have is a discovery service which allow you to point to the right API at the right time. So it can be a, an AT&T API or a Vodafone API, uh, depending on the context. And that's more uh, a, a way 
a, a way to go. So premises, we need to agree on specific semantic, and that's where standardization uh, becomes, becomes a, 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 a key aspect. But this type of pattern, which the, the web understands very well, it's called DNS, is a crucial pattern because that's what creates the, the federation, but that's also what makes becoming an aggregator uh, not very easy, but almost a commodity, so which means that if you want to become an aggregator, you really, really have to add value. And that, that's where the web, I think, has been pretty good at, and that's where we, we operators are generally uh, not failing, but uh, not super good at, and certainly aggregator just exists because operators are lazy. But that's something which is important. The net result of that, and that's a big eye chart, but basically you see two trends happening. You have the, the bottom-up view, which is what are uh, uh, looking at assets and describing API and having a platform to expose them. And then you have the top-down view, which is understanding the developers, understanding how these people will actually consume API, and trying to figure out how to expose the best API for these people. And the two have to marry each other, because of course, otherwise you are on the, on the, it cannot be two different track, but basically at some point there will be a logical platform in the middle. And the platform, don't see it as a layer, because that's not a layer, it's more like a federated system, has a bunch of tools, very similar to, to what Google or what Facebook internally have, because if you look at these architecture, they don't have SDPs and they don't have IMS, uh, strategy because they don't need this, but they have actually a pretty good platform, which is a set of tools to offer to internal or external developers through uh, App Engine for Google, which allow people to develop things. And that's something maybe uh, to more look at instead of the classic, yet another layer on top of things. And that's it. Thank you for the uh, listening. To